Hello and welcome to Avoiding Big Brother. Today we will be looking at a sample report of Cobalt Strike. This malware is interesting in that it is actually a penetration testing tool for security and malware analysts working in the cybersecurity industry. It is a commercial adversary simulation software and acts like the post-exploitation stage of a cyber attack, the stage where payloads are retrieved and dropped onto a device. So Cobalt Strike is a Trojan and a dropper for malicious scripts, other malware, keyloggers and screenshots. Unfortunately, the bad guys are getting their hands on this penetration tool and using it for malicious attacks. They either get hold of Cobalt Strike through software leaks distributed on the dark web or they steal it from legitimate software users. It can be used for a range of cyber attacks with different motivations from ransomware attacks to advanced persistent threats used for espionage. I'll explain what the components of Cobalt Strike is before we take a look at an analysis report. Cobalt Strike itself is a command and control server. This has two components, the server and a client. Team server is the C2 portion of Cobalt Strike, which accepts client connections and web requests. The client is how operators connect to the team server, which can connect remotely or on the same system. The payload of Cobalt Strike is referred to as Beacon. This creates the connection to the team server. Callback sessions from a target machine are also known as beacons. To establish connection and sessions between the beacon payload and the team server, listeners are required. These are configured by the threat actor and many of them will communicate in HTTP or HTTPS. Valid certificates are used for C2 domains to blend in with the legitimate services on the target machine. Malicious traffic will blend in with normal traffic and therefore the beacon payload will appear as legitimate HTTP traffic. Operators may establish several domains and IP addresses, configure them and use them all for establishing beacon connections with team server. DNS requests are used by listeners to establish sessions on the team server for the domains it has control of. Cobalt Strike is customizable and there are various add-ons and kits that can be used for functionality and modification of executables. Cobalt Strike has been known to take advantage of vulnerabilities in Microsoft software such as Office and use this exploitation as part of phishing attacks. Office documents contain malicious scripts that once dropped and executed on a machine will install the beacon. Processors and binary files are connected with a whitelisted domain with an excellent reputation so that the beacon's traffic can blend in with legitimate traffic. As Cobalt Strike is a dropper, it has been used in attacks alongside Redline Stealer and Botnets. Cross-site scripting that takes advantage of weaknesses in web applications is another method that threat actors can use to establish a Cobalt Strike beacon. This is a video clip of an exploit that connects with a C2 server using the scripting language Java. I'll include a link to the video in the description below. This is a report of Cobalt Strike on any run and it is the analysis of the communications between a domain, a malicious domain that will be the control server and the victim's machine. And we can see that there are get and post requests uh, through the Firefox executable, that's the Firefox browser. We don't have many screenshots here, it's not really showing much, but with the get and post requests, we can see OCSP that is the online certificate status protocol and that is how Firefox can define whether traffic is legitimate through HTTPS so we can see here with these get and post requests that the malware Cobalt Strike is trying to hide the traffic as good traffic rather than bad traffic and using legitimate certificates SSL HTTPS so that communications bypass the security detection on the victim's device. The domain in question is Fork Center and it's a French domain .fr. and this I'm sure will be where the control server is. So here is a written report as we can see it's attacking a Windows 7 professional 32-bit machine it is Cobalt Strike that the report is covering. So through the Firefox executable, it's dropping files onto the system, and these will be executing rewrites on the registry files, Windows directories, 
it checks that uh, the system will support the malware checking it's a windows system it all executed through firefox and as we can see lots of changes being made with dll files being pulled to execute the malware the parent process is the explorer.executable that's like a startup executable for a taskbar windows display and that will include the Firefox browser. There we go, DLL files being pulled. And the report seems to include a lot of uh, activity with those DLL files that are required for Cobalt to work. Remember that this is a penetration testing tool and will probably come with a lot of functionality, especially with Windows machines. As we can see, there's a lot of events here, lots of rewriting going on through the Firefox browser and rewriting files in the registry. So let's move on to the next section of the report, file activity. We've got four executable files, all dropped through the web browser. And we can see that this is the binary files, so we are at the deep end of the computer this is like low level code only advanced analysts would probably be able to decipher and it's changing those binary files which is required for the executables to conform with windows systems as we can see here with the http requests with the ocsp that's being used and other websites you can see that they are whitelisted so security is going to think that the traffic is coming from or to uh, legitimate sources. The only thing that's suspicious here is snippets.cdn.mozilla.net. That seems to be the only suspicious domain flagged up in this report. Everything else is either whitelisted or unknown. And as we can see with the DNS request, again, everything is whitelisted apart from the domain that will be the control server, the French domain that's flagged up as malicious. So communications are going from that domain to the target system, back and forth. Uh, bad traffic disguised as good traffic through HTTP requests, GET and POST methods. And it's, it's using certificates like SSL, HTTPS to disguise the bad traffic as good traffic to security detection. So that is a look at how Cobalt communicates with the target machine. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching.